Welcome to the Curly Hair Q&A show. I am your host, Ken Nichols, and I'm supposed to be here with Melanie Nichols. She should be here uh, any minute now. She is the founder of the Raw Hair Organic Salon in beautiful Naples, Florida. It's one of the top curly hair salons in the country, and she's one of the top curl experts and hair color experts anywhere in the world. Hey, everybody. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Uh, have a seat. I've got my little Mrs. Claus outfit on. Mrs. Claus is here. Mrs. Claus is here, socks and all. Hope we have some goodies to give out. We don't. You didn't bring any on your sleigh? <laughs> no. Oh, God, we we don't. We don't. You know what? There, there's a movie like that, Bad, <laughs> bad Santa. Santa. Well, funny. you know what? Hey, I'm I'm a giver. That's what they say. Mm. I um whoever they is. Mm. No, actually, actually, me. I have a Christmas gift I was uh, going to give Rhett, but I can't give it to him until... You're not going to give me a Christmas gift? I don't, ha I don't have any. Mm. I, I don't have any. It's not till next week. Just so you guys know, this is episode 99. We will not be doing a Christmas Eve episode next week, but we will be doing episode 100 on New Year's Eve, and Yay. it'll be a special show with lots of gifts for everyone, including Rhett. The only reason Rhett's not getting his gift tonight is because I ain't wrap it. So. Oh, my God. <laughs> but he'll get it on yeah, New Year's. What? Your ball. Your ball. <laughs> it's, I told you, it's just this, I'm not a hat guy. I'm not a... <laughs> okay. Oh God. Ken has issues. <laughs> I stopped. Yes, yes I, I can. I can. Okay, you think I, I haven't it. thought I of it? it. I think, right. Okay. <laughs> Balls in my eyes. <laughs> All right. Anyway, so so welcome. This is the internet's only weekly uh, curly hair, textured hair Q and A show with actual industry experts or professionals or specialists answering your specific questions. So. <laughs> Here we go. Oh boy. So how, how was your it's week? How's everything special. going? My week? Yeah. I good, crazy, busy. Good, good. Yeah, yeah. we're ha we're having a busy obviously it's the holidays, so we're having a busy week all across the board. Lots of new stuff coming um in the uh, in our sponsor raw curls in the raw curls world you can visit us at www.rawhairorganics.com got to get the sponsor blip in there but there's a lot of neat changes going on this uh um this uh, first quarter of this year so right after the uh right after the first of the year all kinds of stuff that i've got to do and the salon is swamped and it will be for the next six months at least at least right probably june we're always swamped we're always swamped so Anyway, all right. Well, let's let's get started. We got a bunch of stuff to go over, and we'll uh, we'll start from there. So there's uh, there's some curl news. Let's go over uh, a couple of things in the um, in the curly hair world. Uh, for those of you who are Diva Curl users, uh, Diva Curl made a new hire last week, uh, which is a uh, a new CEO for them. Uh, he's an executive that came from Henkel. Uh, what you're probably thinking, well, what does that mean for me? Well, it means a lot. If you're in the Central and South American countries or you are in Europe because he has made it clear that that is one of the reasons that he came on board was to be able to push Diva Curl products um, significantly into the European market, um, I'm assuming through distribution. So if you are a Diva Curl lover or want to use Diva Curl, but you live in Europe and maybe in a country that doesn't get it, uh, fear not, it's on its way apparently. So. So that's interesting curl news. And on a, a sad bit of news in the curly hair world, uh, now I'm I'm going to pronounce this gentleman's name two ways because I've heard it. I have, as as a as a young person, as a baseball fan, I pronounce this name one way. But I've heard a very good friend of ours who uh, is very high up in the in the beauty world pronounce this name a completely different way. Um, uh, Oribe Canales or Oribe Canales died today, age 62. If you're wondering who is he, uh, uh, Oribe, let's call him that. Have you ever heard it? You, Oribe, I say Oribe. Oribe. Oribe uh, died at age 62 this morning. He was the founder of uh, Oribe Hair Care uh, Products. And in, again, South America, Central American countries, very, very big manufacturer of curly and textured hair products. Um, I don't believe it near as strong in the United States as the South America. He was Cuban born, lived in Miami. But um, they're very, very big down there. Uh, curly girl friendly? Mm, no, no. But still a very big, um, very big line. Very influential guy. Came from nothing. Um, made a gigantic brand so anyway um 
Our sympathies mm-hmm. go out to his friends and family. Uh, also, in Curl News this Thursday, hey, so last Thursday, uh, give me some hearts, uh, smash up the likes if uh, you saw the interview that we did on Thursday with uh, curly hair industry icon, Diva Curl, uh, co- uh, co-founder, what is she? Co-founder. Yeah, co-founder mm-hmm. of Diva Curl and the Diva Curl Academy, Miss Sherry Harbinger. We did Q&A with her for Harbinger. 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 Like ginger. Like ginger. ginger ale, ginger ginger bread, uh, Sherry ginger. Harbinger uh, came on for Q&A with us. If you like that uh, or if you didn't see it, check it out on our uh, Curly Hair Q&A YouTube channel. It's archived there. We went on for at least an hour and 15, hour and 20 minutes. Lots of good info coming out of her. Uh, she's going to come on again with us at after the first of the year, talk about her new uh, stylist endeavor for uh, training curly hair stylists, um, and uh, and do a bunch of Q and A with you guys. We'll probably we're gonna I think we're gonna do it live. We're gonna do live Q and A, so you guys will uh, will get to um, we'll we'll get to be there with us next time. But I would check out the interview if you didn't see it. Hopefully you guys liked it. This Thursday we've got another exclusive interview with uh, the co-founder of NaturallyCurly.com, author of the new book The Curl Revolution, and also uh, this young lady was named one of the top 50 textured and curly hair influencers in the world in 2016. That or was it 2015? Might have been 2016. Uh, that's um, Miss Michelle Breyer. We uh, have an interview with her coming on uh, Thursday night, 7.30 p.m. Eastern time. You can listen to that uh, on uh, podcast, uh, iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play Music, um, Spotify, wherever else you consume podcasts. And you can watch it live in the Curly Girl Support Group in Facebook if you want to join that group. That's a, I don't know, 60,000 member group that we have. It'll be there 7.30 Eastern time as well on Thursday night, as well as on as a, as a live stream kind of deal on you, our YouTube channel, the uh, Curly Hair Q and A. So, so that's um, so that's pretty much at that's uh, at, and actually that's pretty good. You're going to get a lot of a uh, lot of good background on uh, on what she sees going on now, how naturally curly came about, and uh, what she sees for the future. Uh, really, really, really interesting interview. Uh, lovely woman. You'll love her to death. And we'll have a special link actually in that show uh, if you want to buy the book, the uh, Curl Revolution book. Should have brought it. I did. It's in the car. Oh, okay. I found mine. It was in the car. Well, we have a picture of it somewhere, but anyway, <laughs> we have the book. It's here. I it's just not in here. We talked about that but, last week. So but I there'll be a link for it. Well, you'll be able to. Well, you, it, you'll be it. able to buy it um, uh, at a uh, at a little bit of a discount. So that's pretty cool. Uh, okay, let's go through. Uh, let's go through one uh, one other thing, Rhett. Uh, let's go through one other thing. So I know a lot of you guys who have followed us for a long time have known that I've been hot to buy myself a Lamborghini, and I've always wanted a Lamborghini. And let me tell you what's happened. So decided I was going to get a Lamborghini. I wanted a Lamborghini, so I thought the best thing I could do would be to join a Facebook group for Lamborghini owners. So I joined a Facebook group for Lamborghini owners and I went on and I made my first post and I said, hey guys, I'm finally gonna get a Lamborghini. Here's what I want. I need some suggestions. What can I do? Where do I go? How do I go about this? And I posted a picture of what I wanted and this is it, this is what I wanted. That color? That's, I, I, I really wanted it in green, but that's, uh, that's what I wanted. And in that group, the very first person posted and said, well, I see you're from Florida and you can go to Lamborghini of Miami Beach and they've got a really good selection and they'll have exactly what you're looking for. Then I got three or four comments right after that from people that said, ah, uh, no, you don't want to, you don't want to do that. We, we've got a better idea. Don't listen to him. You can buy this part at XYZ place and that part at XYZ place and this and that, whatever, and you'll have a Lamborghini. So I looked at all those posts and everybody pretty much condemned the first person. And I took their advice and I went and I bought all the things together And I brought them and it took me two and a half months to do it, to put it together. And I came back to the group and I posted and I said, you know, I've listened to everybody in this group 
and I bought exactly what they told me to buy, and here's what I ended up with. I ended up with 79 Camaro fenders, 73 El Camino rear quarter panels, a hood scoop from a Trans Am, and the front window of an RV for a spoiler. And I said, in tears, this isn't what I was expecting. Help. And all the people that gave me the advice in my first initial post when I said I wanted to get a Lamborghini were nowhere to be found. So what I really wanted was this. And I ended up with that. Nobody asked me what I wanted to spend, what my budget was, nothing. I told them exactly what I wanted. And everybody assumed, at least a lot of people did, assumed that I wanted to do it as cheaply as possible. And there's what I got. So anyway. Were they real tears? They were real tears. Ken doesn't cry, so. I don't cry. I don't believe this. Story. Um, yeah. So, um, yeah. So if you're ever in a Lamborghini group and somebody comes in and says they want a Lamborghini, um, you might want to ask them a few questions first and so, get a little more background. Does this relate to curls? Oh, yeah, it does. And I'm just going to leave it like that because the, peop because the people that know what I'm getting at know what I'm getting at. Yeah, okay. Because I see it happen every day. What happens in the curly hair groups is people come into the groups and they say, I'm ready to embrace my curls. I haven't done it my whole life. I'm so excited, but I don't know what to do. Help me. And everybody automatically assumes that they want to do it for 10 bucks. And then they use those products for 10 bucks total for two, two and a half months, come back to the group in tears because their hair looks worse than when they started. And the people that gave them the advice to begin with are nowhere to be found. Um, I'm not exactly sure what the answer is, but I just wanted to make that point because I I don't know if I, I, I don't really know what the answer is, but it goes back to, and we've addressed this before. Um, you know, when, when you're, when you're giving advice, ask, ask questions because you need, you need to know where people are coming from. You need to know where they stand. You need, you need to know more than just, they want to embrace their curls because you want everybody to be happy. And that is a problem because I'm seeing probably an equal amount of people post in the groups that are happy after two or three months doing the curly girl method as they are unhappy in the curly method after two or three months. So anyway, so that's that. So what's your point? Be careful who you listen to. So who do you listen to? Who do you listen to? And if you're, and if you're giving advice, make sure you're asking enough questions, you know, um, make sure you're asking enough questions. So Anyway, it's just to me, it's just sad. It's it's just been a continuing problem, and I see it in all the curl curl groups. I see it all all the time, and um, I mean that's you know that that's the people that I see quit the curly girl method, uh, frankly, are almost always newbies, mm -hmm. almost always newbies. Newbies being a couple of months in, mm -hmm. and um, and the whole idea of of curly hair groups, in my opinion, is to um, you know, is for them to come in and for people to come in and get good, solid, you know, advice. And, um, you know, sometimes that's not happening. And I don't, other than addressing it, um, you know, with, you know, we have five or six different curly hair groups, other than addressing it, you know, in a, in a way that people are, are aware of this, that this is happening. Um, yeah, I don't really know what the solution is. Well, you know, no matter what, who's giving advice, a lot of times you're, even for myself, I'm giving advice without seeing the person's hair in front of me. So, you know, it's, it's still some trial and error. We can give advice and then you, you know, you still have to try and figure out what works for you. Um, because again, you know, that's the, the benefit of coming to the salon because we're getting our hands in it. We can see exactly what's going on with your hair. You know, it's easier to recommend instead of just answering posts online. Big difference. Yeah, big difference. So mm -hmm. anyway, uh, take that for what it's what it's worth. But it's it does it, every once in a while we do need to talk about it. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot is um, I think we're seeing a lot more of it now with the holidays coming up mm -hmm. because I think a lot of people were 
thinking for their holiday pictures that that's what they were trying that they really wanted to embrace them and then it's really not coming to fruition and i know i'm not the only one seeing those people come into the groups and it's it's sad. And if you guys, if you guys are in a lot of the curly hair Did groups you and you've seen me, well, yeah, you've seen me. I, it, you guys that are in the curly hair groups, not just ours, but you know, the other ones that, um, you know, that I float around in or moderate, uh, you'll, you know, you'll see that I'm telling people start over, clarify and start over, mm. you know, and it's, and they're crushed, you know, but I know, you know, but I know that's the answer. Why is that crushing? That's because crushing. they, because they were expecting Two months ago when they started this, they were expecting by Sometimes now they'd be, that they'd be beautiful, that they'd look like my Lambo. You know what I mean? Uh, they figured yeah, they'd look but, like that. I mean, if you have years and years of damaging your hair and straightening and flat ironing and and highlighting and, it, you know, it's just like an illness. It doesn't go away overnight. No. You know, it can imp- you can have improvements, but it might take yeah. some time to, yeah. you know, fully um, recover. Yeah. And that's, and that's the kind of abuse. Right. And that's, that's the kind of good, solid advice that, that people, that people need. So if you are in one of the Facebook or, or actually even some of the Instagram stuff, but mostly Facebook groups, um, you know, when you see people come in, ask, you know, ask questions, you know, they're, they're looking for help. They're in there looking for help. You know, they're, they're not, they're looking for good, solid advice. So let's make sure and give it to them. It's not always, you know, we live in an, uh, uh, drive through an instant gratification world and it's just not always the case you mm-hmm. know I mean it's, it's a journey and like I said even and even when a client comes in for the first time we're learning about how their hair reacts to certain products the color you know so it's a journey sometimes it takes a few tries you know until you get it the way that you like it yeah so you know that would be my advice don't give up but don't be so impatient either you've got to you know don't expect miracles overnight. Sometimes you receive them, but sometimes, sometimes you don't. Sometimes you do. A lot of times you don't. Yeah. A lot of times you don't. So Here's a fun fact. So who do you think is more worried about their hair being messed up? Guilty. That's charged. <laughs> At least he admitted it. Yeah. Yeah, you you can't hair. drive with the windows down, you, you know, it's like, oh my God, open, his hair t- is going to blow. Or the top open. She's always, every time she rides in my car, she's like, open the top. I'm like, no. <laughs> oh, God, he's so worried about messing his hair up. <laughs> I have great hair. Uh, thanks to, well, you know. <laughs> you have a great hair stylist. <laughs> I, have so, great, are you not I have gonna, a great hair stylist. Were you not going to give me credit? I what, If I could see you through this. <laughs> I'm glad thing. the ball's <laughs> smacking you in the eye. You deserve it. <laughs> It's not what's getting in here. All right. Let's get on to some questions. Yeah. Okay. Hi, uh, Melanie. I started the curly girl, my curly girl journey in June of 2017, then fell off the last four months. Getting back into it more strictly this time after the first of the year. I'm looking to get a diva cut. When is the best time? Right when I start up again or wait until I've been doing the curly girl method for a while again? No, right away. Why wait? You know, um, you know, the haircut is definitely going to help give you the best curls that you can get. The right cut, the right products is always best. So there's no reason to wait. I would do it right away. Absolutely. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Good. I thought what's what's our holiday special? Are we doing Ask Me Anything? That's what I thought we were doing. Yeah, we're doing Ask Me Anything, but I really didn't get any. Oh. Yeah, I really didn't get any. Okay. But I did say what we would do on the um, on the New Year's Eve one. I we'd do ask me anything because we'll, we'll it'll be a whole lot more. It'll oh, well, yeah. yeah, we'll yeah have we're going to do a big So if you're going to if you, there's anything you really really want to know that you really really don't want to ask, next week could be or yeah, the New not Year's next week. week. I am not week. working on New Year or Christmas, Christmas Eve. Eve. We're going to go look at Christmas lights. Ken would like me to probably do a show, but I am not doing a show on Christmas Eve. Rhett, do you want to do a show? No. Rhett says no. I can't he do can it He can do myself. it by himself. That's right. <laughs> you can wear your Santa suit. Hey, I carried this show for a long time. <laughs> I didn't say it was good. <laughs> I said I carried it for a long time. <laughs> oh, Melanie, have you heard about this new uh, hair dryer called Rev Air? Uh, that's a reverse airflow dryer, a vacuum uh, instead of blowing. It's supposed to be no heat damage. Wow. No, I have not heard of it. I have to look into that. Yeah, I'll have to look check it out. No, Sounds I have heard of it. I haven't seen one. We'll have to check into it. Maybe we'll send send a message to the company and see if they want to comp us. Mm. I doubt it. Nobody does. Like um, Tyson. I don't know. We'll see. Okay. Um, I've been having problems with my curls in the winter, uh, i.e. hat hair. What is a method I can use to keep my curls bouncy and avoid the hat hair? You're asking the wrong guy. <laughs> I don't know. Do you know? Got any ideas? 
Well, um, not really because, I mean, if you wear a hat, it's going to, you know, flatten your hair. So I'm just thinking about that. Um, you know, maybe put some clips in it before to keep the hat from totally crushing it down. I'm just brainstorming on the on the fly here. Um, you know, and then, of course, use a curl refreshing product. Just carry that with you. So that's what I would do. So you would be prepared to refresh wherever you are once you get to work or wherever you're going and you had to put a hat um, on your head. Then you have your curl refresher with you ready to um Fix your curls. Mm, okay. That's all I can think of. Okay. How often should I be getting a curly cut? Not mm. me, the question asker. I didn't think it was you. You don't have curly hair. Um, I'm in every two to three weeks at most cutter. Curl yeah, cut. that's true. So typically, on average, our curly haircuts, haircut clients, uh, come in every three months. So... That's that's typically what I would recommend. Now, there's some people that come in sooner because they wear their hair shorter and they want a little, you know, clean up in between or they don't want to, you know, um, get off of their schedule with their hair color. Uh, and then there's some people that go longer. There's a few, you know, curly people that get a couple haircuts a year and that's it. So but on average, you know, I do recommend for our clients to come every three months. OK, mm -hmm. uh, Melanie. Are ions or ionic hair dryers good for curly hair? Yes. Yes. Tell me why. Well, because what's an ionic dryer? Uh, well, Is there an easy way to answer that. Not really. Okay. Not really. Um, I mean, it has to do with uh, you know, there's negative and pi positive ions. But anyway, the gist of it is that it's going to smooth the hair, so it okay. helps it to be smoother and more shiny. So yes. So it, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, do you use ionic hair dryers at the salon? Yes. You do? We do. Okay. Uh, okay. Melanie, do you recommend a seven row Denman brush or a nine row Denman brush for 3A curls? And are there any secret techniques that I need to know when using a Denman brush? Mm. Um, you know, this came up before. I think the standard Denman is seven rows. Isn't that what we have? I don't know. The one that I, that I... I have I have one at home and in my gym bag. I think it's nine. Is it? I'm pretty sure. Yes, it's nine. No. I'm I'm positive it is. Yeah. That would be a lot of rows. It is a lot of rows. Hmm. I have to count them. I don't know, but I've never removed rows and all that business that people talk about. So the more rows, the the closer the teeth together, the more it's going to um, stretch the hair, and. Um, so there's really no tricks to it. You know, you definitely want to have uh, some kind of leave-in conditioner in the hair so you're not pulling or snapping it. And then it's just the same as detangling. Um, whether, you know, usually I start from the bottom. I guess that's one tip or trick. Um, you know, we start from the bottom and work our way up to the top um, to detangle. But those are definitely good. I would say either one is fine for, what is it, 3A hair? 3A curls. Oh, um, 3A. Well, that's a lot like mine. Mm. Um, then I, I guess I would recommend the one with less rows and less pulling it straight because that's going to, um, kind of pull your curl out. So on my hair, I don't like to use a Denman brush, brush because I feel like it, um, you know, makes my hair too straight and, and it doesn't, uh, you know, allow the curls to bounce up as much as like a wide tooth comb or even a wet brush. Okay. Yeah. I'm, that's my next question. And I'm going to put you on the spot. Wet brush or Denman brush? Wet brush. Wet brush. Okay. For me, but I'm just saying, you know, this is the whole point for different hair types. There's, you know, I would recommend different brushes. So the wet brush doesn't work on like the, the three C's or the four type hairs. Um, you know, the ultra curly, the ultra textured, however you want to call it. Um, you know, you need something, you would need something a little stronger and, um, with more teeth like that. So it's going to help to detangle all of the hair because does that make sense? Like a, a wet brush or wide tooth comb, if you're going to choose those tools to work with, um, you know, are spread more apart and that hair is so compacted that you can't, it, when you use those tools to comb or detangle through, you're not, you're not getting a lot of the hair. So you still have a lot of tangles. 
Mm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Hey, uh, for you guys watching live, did you notice my my sweater? Oh, can you yes. see? Yes, we need a close up of your sweater. I don't think you can get us close up, but you see it? Can oh. you guys see it? Isn't that funny? Oh, oh he said he can get Rhett's, a close up. Rhett's gonna get a close up. Yeah, you gotta see that. Ken has ugly Christmas sweater on. It's not, it's, but it's funny. Yeah, now he loves it. I, Let me tell you how much I complaining he did. Oh my gosh. It's, it's, see, it's you see it? It's snowman and they're hold, he's holding a blow two blow dryers. Yeah, it's, he's I mean, robbing so them of his bag of money. It says freeze and he's got two freeze. blow dryers. It's yeah. so perfect. I know. That's the cutest. Yeah. I'm just not a sweater guy because they're not form fitting enough. They make me look fat. Um or you're not, supposed not to be, svelte. You're, not svelte. You're supposed to be Santa. You're supposed to have a belly. But now I you don't. have like pointy nipples or something because you were pulling on it Ooh, my nip i was not pulling on my nipples yeah, <laughs> Maybe the sweater. stop moving on oh. moving on uh okay is it cold in here <laughs> it's just yes it's, <laughs> no it's not i'm sweating like a pig with this hat on this ball in my eye and a sweater <laughs> see he's complaining <laughs> nothing but a complainer not, you're not a very good santa okay, you, you, we're gonna go you know, see the grinch on christmas oh my god uh, we saw Elf yesterday. We saw the play. Yes, you're supposed to be happy, jolly. I am happy and sparkly. jolly. Uh, okay. Um, all right, Melanie. Uh, when you use a hair mask, is it best to use on wet hair, or should you use it on dry hair first? Mm, wet. Wet. Okay. Definitely wet. You want that hair to be hydrated, and you know to um, work with the conditioners. You know, hair needs that water, and so definitely wet. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, when are you having Jess from Jesse Curl back on the show? After the first of the year, she sometime was just in January. On. Yeah, she was just. <laughs> Did Jess send that question in? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. Uh... <laughs> Next year. Next year should be after the first of the year. Yes, we'll have her back on. Mm -hmm. Yes, I think just okay. Well, I well I guarantee you this next question was was not submitted by Chaz Dean. Melanie, what are your thoughts on when products? Uh. <laughs> I made a funny. Well, here, let me answer that question. Why Melanie. is that so funny? Let me answer. Because she he made the kind of the first question being coming from Jess, so this clearly wouldn't be from Jess Dean. What are your thoughts on Wen products? Well, you know what's really ironic about that is the guy that put that whole Wen deal together is actually a family friend of ours. So here, here's my answer to to that question. Our thoughts on Wen products. Um, a a twenty six million dollar judgment in a class action lawsuit um, is enough to get me to not. <laughs> <laughs> tell the story I about that. Love you, Jonathan. <laughs> love you to death, man. Tell the story. Well, here's. Can I share my thoughts about sure, it? Sure, have at it. Yeah, I'm so, gonna have a water because I'm sweating to death. Okay, cool off over there, Santa. <laughs> um, so my thoughts about when. Okay, okay for some people, not okay for some people. Just like any product, but um, you know, I've talked about it before. My beliefs about you know formulating. Um, separate cleansers and conditioners because they're they have different pH levels. So I I don't personally love a one shot deal where it's all in one. The you know um and you know and honestly they've had to kind of backtrack a little too because you know it was like that was the one holy grail product that's all you need and then uh oh you know it's like well now all of a sudden they offer all kinds of different products which mm -hmm. is kind of funny but yeah um. You know, I just, it's not, I don't love that idea coming from a formulating background, knowing the different pHs and the different functions that products have. Um, yeah, I just, um, I don't love that idea. Yeah. And then it works for some people. That's great. You know, people that don't have oily scalps and they don't get buildup and whatever. But, um, you know, I just believe that there's different products for different things and they're formulated accordingly. Yeah. Okay. Uh in a 100% transparency because because of this whole deal and because you know we we know the guy that I mean literally from day 1 put this whole deal together he told us about the initial meeting and whatever really neat story but so i read the entire lawsuit and how the proceedings went and the judgment in in if i'm 100% transparent if i was on that jury i would have found him not guilty it, it was it wasn't the product 
It was the technique. They sued him about the problem. It was the technique that was causing the problem. Hmm. You could see it in the lawsuit. I, I don't know how. I don't know. Cutting, I don't know if I agree with you. Well, the way I the way I read the 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 suit, if I go by the letter of how the suit was filed, I I, w I wouldn't have made that judgment. But anyway. Yeah, but I I don't I don't know that I agree with you though because like I said, I mean, just using, it's like. It was the promotion of the technique. He, okay, but you know, if you're just using one product to cleanse your ear, which is always washing with a conditioner, that's kind of the gist of it, all right? Um, so that is like doing your laundry with fabric softener and never using a laundry detergent. Mm, yeah. You're going to eventually, you know, I think get some buildup and residual that needs to be washed away. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, um, now let's go to a stylist question. Melanie, I have a question that's not product related. Uh, it's more curly hair related. Have you ever had someone get a cut that they hate and ask for it to be fixed? Not a bad cut, just not what they wanted. If so, how did they go about it with you? Oh, okay, so me personally. Mm -hmm. um, yes, let's see, read it again. Okay. Have you ever had someone get a curly cut they hate okay. and asked for it to be fixed? Not a bad cut, just not what they wanted. And if so, how did they go about it with you? Okay. Um, no, not a curly cut. I was just thinking regular haircut in general over the 21, 22 years I've been doing hair. Um, it happens. And it can be a, a, a miscommunication or what I've had happen, honestly, and this is not necessarily with curly hair, but I'm just trying to think of a scenario. Um, oh, I did think of a story. OK, in a second. But, um, you know, somebody has an idea of a haircut that they want and then you give it to them and then they they go home or, the, you know, then they later on feel like they don't love it on them. So uh, I've had that happen where somebody decides to make a change and then they end up not liking that change. And it's like, oh, man, we almost should have just kept what we always did. But, you know, sometimes people feel like they want something different and then they end up not really being able to handle that change. Mm -hmm. um, oh, yeah. And it just uh, what happened uh, this week? We had someone come in. Uh, that was more for color. So, you know. And, and it wasn't my client, but we did have somebody call and they said, you know, they really, really love the stylist that did their hair, but they just, it wasn't what their expectations were. So I said, you know, I'm really glad you called. I would rather have somebody call and talk to us and, you know, come back so that it can be redone to their liking. You know, um, she, you know, it wasn't, it, it just needed to be tweaked. That's all. And it was just a little, um, miscommunication we'll call it um but so as far as curly hair the only thing that i can think of, you know and i i'm sure there's been i think uh, you know some people that claim you know i didn't cut it short enough on top or something like that but you know i don't know that they've come back in they may just put a bad post out there which is unfortunate because it's a simple fix you know um you come in and you know, I'd like I say, I'd rather have somebody just call. And I think I'm speaking for any stylist. If, you know, someone's not happy, we definitely would want to hear about it and be given the opportunity to make that change to satisfy you and make you happy. Of course, that's what, you know, we want. It. That's what we're all about. Um, and sometimes, like I say, they, it just isn't what you're expecting or you end up just not loving it. And then you need to um, change it again. Oh, I know. Okay. So I have a client coming tomorrow who I went through that with. Um, she came in and she's got curly hair, but she said she just, oh, she wasn't even scheduled for a haircut, but she said she just wanted a trim. She wanted the um, bottom shorter. She wanted, and, and we were very clear. We were really, I mean, because there is a little bit of a language barrier, but, um, you know, we, I'm very thorough in a consultation. So we, and I explained, I said, okay, so you want the layers to be longer, all this to be longer and this to come up shorter. I mean, we even use visuals. Yes, that was it. Okay, great. So that's what I did. Well, I did get the phone call or the text message. She actually sent me a text message with pictures, <laughs> um, saying, you know, she doesn't love her hair. It's not what she really, you know, wanted. She's, you know, getting a triangle now. And, 
I said, well, number one, you know, we really needed to always do a curly cut on your type of hair, which you chose not to, you know, you just wanted to throw in a, a trim that wasn't scheduled. So that was, you know, mistake number one. And, um, but I thought, well, because we were just bringing that length up, fine, because literally that's what I was doing was bringing the length up from longer to shorter. So I said, okay, and we did it. But um, so she sent me pictures and we went back and forth about, you know, what she was not happy with. And I realized, yeah, okay, well, you need the curly cut and you need more layers. So she came in, you know, and that's what I did. I gave her a curly cut. I changed the shape. I brought it actually. And then when she came in, she had other pictures too. So um, we we took it even tighter in the back like uh, an angled bob. And then, and so I added more layers to it, which she clearly said the first time that she didn't want those layers cut shorter, but you know, um, that happens. So I listened, I did what she requested and she wasn't happy. So she, luckily she gave me the chance yeah. to, you know, do something different. And then she loved it. She sent me messages after saying how much she loved her hair. Sure. So thank God, you know, because it was just a little, you know, weird situation there, but that happens to yeah. the best of us. Well, and living in South Florida where we do, there's there's always language barriers because there's there's so many different people that come into the country you know as you know through south florida miami as a port of entry and then stay here with all kinds of different languages and different dialects so that you know that's you know that can you know that can clearly um, clearly be an issue the other thing that i've seen be an issue in the past is people that think they know the right terminology exactly and are expressing a certain terminology but it's not the right terminology for what they want. And um, yeah, that, that can be an issue. That's, That's true. And issue. I like I really can't blame the language thing on this because, like I said, we were so clear. I mean, I was thorough with her. We did visuals. You know, I showed her. I explained. And yes, we agreed. So I think it was just one of those where she thought that's what she wanted. And also she's going through a lot in her personal life. So, you know, it's one of those situations um, and it's no big deal. And I was like, hey, no big deal. Don't worry. We can fix it. You know, and we did. And she loves it. So there you go. I mean, mm, OK. Yeah. OK. Uh, Melanie, can we go another since we're not doing a Christmas show? Can we go another 10 minutes? Uh, Ask go a little bit longer. Sure. OK. I'll try to do a more rapid fire because I got I've got. <laughs> but I'll, I'll go through. All right, let's go. Okay. Uh, Melanie, can people get curls later in life? When I was young, I was given a medication and my straight red hair fell out and came back brown and curly since it, since it's been a pain in my rear end. <laughs> Have you ever heard of this happening? Yes. Yes. Okay. It's common. Uh, any way to change it? No, right? No. Okay. All right. Uh, Melanie, is it okay to skip the conditioning step in the shower and just use a leave-in conditioner while styling? Depending on the hair, yes. Mm. You know, if your hair is, is fine with that, then that's fine. Before I had my curly line, that's what I did with the Raw Hair Organics line. We just had a moisturizing product. Um, wait, let me think about this. Am I saying that correctly? Um, no. I'm sorry. So with the curly line, it was before we had the wavy products for the wavy swavy hair. So what I would recommend is just using the cleanser and then the um, anti frizz, which is our that was our light leave in spray. So because the raw curls conditioner would have been too heavy for that fine hair that um, didn't need that much of uh, moisturization. Okay. So that's exactly what I did. Okay. Uh, okay. Let's see. I have two questions. One, I am having a hard time getting volume in my roots. When I fluff it with my fingers, it looks great. But five minutes later, it's deflated. I air dry with clipping. I tried diffusing, but I prefer the look of my curls when they air dry. I have thick 2C hair, shoulder length with a diva cut. Mm. Thick 2C hair, shoulder length. And she's having a hard time getting... Um porosity an issue no you know just I, i'm thinking that it could be uh products you know maybe switching to something a little bit lighter because that's you know um 2c is not super curly so i'm not sure i'm not sure the per it could be a porosity thing yeah um depending on you know the level of porosity maybe she's using too much um like heavy products heavy moisturizing products so that could be weighing the hair down 
Also, um, you know, I'm not sure what kind of diva haircut they did. Well, here's the thing. Okay, so I know people, some people are going to hate this, but um, that's part of the difference. That's one of those situations where I feel like um, the raw curls cut helps somebody like that rather than just oh, yeah. doing a straight diva cut. Yeah. Uh-huh. Because when we do that curl sculpting, it's going to help um, take some of that heaviness away and help those curls to bounce up. So there's, you know, there's situations where I do just the dry cutting, which is more the diva style. But then here's a scenario exactly that could benefit from the raw curls sculpting where you do wet. Mm, okay. All right. She's got a uh, second part of her question. Uh, this is interesting. Uh, okay. I'm new to using all the Diva Curl products. That's what she's using, all Diva Curl. When I had my hair done at the salon for the first time, she did a buildup buster, which is a product in the Diva Curl line to get rid of buildup. Uh, now that I'm using all Diva Curl products, do I need to use buildup buster every so often in the future or because I'm no longer using silicone and paraben free, et cetera, products, am I good to go? Sherry talked about this in the interview on Thursday. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, you know, it's uh, as needed, as needed. So yep. it, sh it shouldn't really be necessary. But if you feel like your hair, again, is not functioning properly, then go ahead and do, you know, a clarifier with the Build Up Buster. But just use as needed. It's not something you would have to do on a regular basis. Yeah. Um, you know, one thing I want to throw out right away to you guys who uh, who submit questions every week for us, uh, make sure that you, you keep them short. Like there's a question here that's that's good, but it's it's a paragraph and a half. It's just and I and I can't I can't do it because what ends up happening if you submit too long of a question, if I read it to Melanie, because we don't preview these, you know, when we do the show, she'll, she'll forget the first two or three sentences by the time we get to the end. It just does, it just doesn't work. So so keep that in mind. If you um, if you're going a to submit short a question, attention span. short, yeah, make it short, and make it short and sweet. OK, did you see my little tiara on Let's, here? It's cute. I literally I swear to God, I was just going to say that you have a tiara. I have a tiara. tiara. You I'm like princess Cause, Mrs. Cause you're a princess. Claus. You're mm -hmm. like princess Mrs. Claus. OK, uh, let's see. Hi, Melanie. I'm a newbie here. How do you know what type of curl you have? Okay. Well, we talked about this um, the last couple of interviews, actually, like a three, I think. Yeah. Um, there's lots of different curl typing out there from very simplistic to basically like, you know, four different curl patterns from straight, wavy, curly, kinky to the naturallycurly.com system, which Michelle explained came from another stylist and them mm -hmm. tweaking it, Yeah. Um, which gets, you know, Il more elaborate and breaks it down into subsections of each of those categories. So um, basically, you know, you can just search online and it gives details of how to look at pictures and explanations of the curls and you can figure out which category you fit into. Mm -hmm. We like we like to actually keep a chart at the salon. And when people ask, I like I hand it to them and have them figure it out themselves because it, I think it's just so much better for people to be able to to do that rather than me just tell them. Right, right. I do the same thing with people with, in, with ingredients. If they send me like a private message with the picture of a back of a bottle and say, is this curly girl friendly? I'm like, here, I'll show you where to look. Mm. You know, you, you need to kind of, it's one of those things where you got to kind of learn to do the work yourself. So, you know, yeah, I think you learn Plus, more. I, I, think, I, I get, think you I learn better that way. I don't have the time. I'd love I to. I know I do. Uh, okay. Like I learned better geography. I didn't learn well in school, so I have to travel so I can learn geography. There you go. Yeah. Good idea. Can too much moisture cause curls to frizz? Too much moisture cause Interesting curls question. to frizz. Hmm. Not that I'm aware of. I'm going to answer it like that. I don't think so. I have not heard of that, but... You okay. know, um, yeah, it would be more of the lack of moisture. So, okay. yeah, not as far as I know. OK, uh, Melanie, can you suggest some beach care for curly hair and skin as well? We are going on a seven day cruise. I am worried that the sun and heat would be harsh on my curly hair and skin. Mm, definitely. You know, um, sunscreen, UV protection, um, a lot of products, you know, the Raw Curls products and other ones, um, I know the Diva Curl products have, and a lot of them out there have natural UV protectants in them. So, um, you know, I would suggest using like a leave-in to help protect your hair. Maybe take an extra 
uh, moisturizer uh, or or even maybe that buildup buster or, or clarifier if you're going to be swimming a lot in the chlorine or in the salt water um, you know you just have to a adjust a little bit okay Melanie are there any curly girl approved hair color lines <sighs> You know, that's come up before, and it's hard to say um, mm, yes, yes, um, because like the one that I use in my salon, I would consider Curly Girl Friendly. Um, it doesn't have silicones in them, and it has the least amount of chemicals possible. So to me, that's the best Curly Girl Friendly hair color that there is. Mm, okay. Yeah, it's definitely more moisturizing and conditioning than, you know, traditional hair colors. has the least amount of chemicals in it. And uh, What brand is that? Well, we typically use Oway, Oway. which is Organic Way, and also some... That's a salon professional brand, yep, correct? Organic Color Systems. Those are the two top ones that we use. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. Hopefully that helps. Uh, Melanie, on days I do not wash my hair, I use a cheap disposable hotel shower cap to keep it dry in the shower. It's starting to fall apart. Are there better options? What am I missing? Do you use a shower cap? You don't use a shower cap on your... You just put it up. Yeah, I just have it up, how I showed that one day, how I sleep, like in my modified pineapple. Um, but a lot of people do use a shower cap. So, no, it's cheap. Get another one. Cheap. Get another one. Okay, <laughs> good. I want to say, I think um, I think we'll do, should we wrap you it can, up? You can, you know, you could, they sell, I think you can go to Sally's. Yeah, you could go to Sally's and just get a box of the color processing caps. They're just they're like saran wrap with elastic on them. So that would be cheap and easy. And you have a whole box of them, so they're just disposable. Mm -hmm. There okay. you go. That's a good recommendation. Okay. I think I'm gonna I think I'm gonna wrap it up. I'll save these uh the rest of these questions for the next show because there's not one. The next show is gonna be a special one though. That's our hundredth uh, Rhett, are you working on it? <laughs> one hundred episodes, little snippets. I, I think his mic and earphones are broken. Uh-huh. <laughs> Yeah. Right. <laughs> I'm counting on you. Right. Don't disappoint me. Uh, oh boy. Yeah, he's that's yeah. Yeah, he's one big disappointment, right? <sighs> anyway, yeah, so keep that in mind. Next week, Christmas Eve, there will be no show, but this Thursday, 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time, will be the Curly Hair Q&A interview with uh, NaturallyCurly.com co-founder and uh, author of the uh, Curl Revolution book, Miss Michelle Breyer. Don't miss that. It was a lot of fun. A uh, lot, lot of fun. And we've got three more interviews actually uh, scheduled for the beginning of the year, which um, I think you guys are really, really, really going to like. Uh, one or two for sure are going to be really, really good. Uh, what else did I want to throw out there? Oh, uh, one other thing before I forget. Uh, uh, here's another shameless plug of our sponsor, Raw Curls at rawhairorganics.com. Uh, there's going to be a little bit of an after Christmas sale, um, but that sale is not going to be on Raw Curls products. It's going to be on Raw Hair Organics products, uh, Rod's Grooming for Men products, and uh, Raw Paws products. We're doing some rebranding, and uh, there's some stuff that's going to have to go, and it's going to be um, it's going to be pretty cheap. So if you want to hook up the rest of your family who are not curlies or your puppies, you might want to take a look. Or if the guy in your life, if you want to make his hair and shaving, or if he's thinning, um, there'll be some really. Um, You're getting rid of raw paw stuff. Uh, some some of it, hmm. some of it. So yeah, so we're doing a rebranding on some stuff, and it's just. Um, mm. And I'm going to do it on, and that's the only day I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it on the day after Christmas. And that's uh, that's it. And that's all. So that's a, that. You don't have a Christmas special? No, I do not have a Christmas special. Uh, that that is. Yeah, <laughs> but no we are. Special and no but giveaway? if you no, we're gonna do it on New Year's Eve. So if you hang around oh. New Year's Eve, it's gonna be. Trust me, it's gonna be worthwhile to come and watch our New Year's Eve show because it's gonna be fun. We're gonna have champagne, and um, except for the guy behind the. Uh, control panel probably not a good he idea sparkling sparkling he'll be juice. drunk when he gets here <laughs> cool. well, he always is drunk aren't you isn't that the norm <laughs> can i'll really be the bad santa <laughs> i'll really be the bad santa but yeah we'll do some fun uh, we'll do some fun giveaways and some other stuff that only people that watch the show so we're having it at the regular time right? we're having it at the regular time we're not going to do the midnight count no we're not no we're can, not can't stay awake can't stay awake that late. now we might do something else but 
anyway, so yeah, 7.30 uh, Eastern time on New Year's Eve. And I'm trying to think if I've got anything else I want to throw out there. I think that's pretty much it. You got anything else? Nope. Nope. Pretty much it. Okay, wonderful. All right. Well, thanks for joining us. We will see you guys Bye, in everyone. two weeks. Have a Merry Christmas. Have That's a, what I have. Have yes. a wonderful Merry Christmas and a blessed, happy new year. But we'll yeah. see you. Only uh, only the best we wish for all of you. Yes, so. and thanks for supporting us and joining us every week. We appreciate it. Yeah, we really do. Thank you for tolerating me. <laughs> Are you I, talking to me or to them? I say that pretty much every day. It's like in my vernacular, right? It's just thank you for tolerating me. <laughs> I can tell you what his New Year's resolution will be. <laughs> Am I quitting the show? <laughs> no. We'll see you guys. Bye. Bye.